Welcome to episode 3 of our SNAP series. In this episode, we will be making programs talk to each other and more. So what I have here is a simple program, all credit to bgc.edc.org, and what you may notice at first are these three blocks. Now, these blocks may not look familiar to you, but that's because they're custom blocks that are user created. See, if you right click on one of them and click edit, you will see that this who reporter block is defined through this report block as a random item of this list. Now, uh, we'll get to uh, details about reporter blocks, command blocks, and the other types of custom blocks in a later episode. But right now, you might be wondering, why is this report so significant? Why can't we just use something like, let's say, say? Well, that's because a reporter block sends information from a program to different parts of the program to be used, while the say block is used to take that information and relay it to the user. So it's very different in their usage, so that's why we need a reporter block in this instance, and you'll see shortly. Okay, so now that we've explained reporters, it's, there's another block that we have to explain, and that's broadcast. So if you go to the control blocks, you can see that broadcast is one of the blocks that you can select. By clicking this arrow, you can make a new message. Let's call this one, um, let's stick with new. Click OK. And now this block will broadcast new if we select it. So we're going to use this broadcast here as an example. If you run the sequence, it will say gossip and then broadcast your turn. But what does that broadcast do? Well, if we go to the second sprite's code, you will see when I receive your turn. So that means this will broadcast your turn, and then when sprite 2 receives your turn, it will wait a second and then run this block. So this is a great way of having basically inter-sprite communication in your code because when one sprite broadcasts something, it can be picked up by other sprites, so their code can also run. So there's one more block that we're going to go over. So if you open this gossip custom block, you can see that it's also reporting, like we talked about earlier, but it says join. Now what does join do? So join takes a item of a list, and it combines all of them. So, for example, here, join who. This who is coming from this block, of course. And then it's joining that with a space, the output from does what, another space, and who. So this is a great way to create strings of text. And so here, in say, you have say gossip. So this gossip will report all of these in a single string, and then the sprite will say it, as shown here. Okay, so with that explanation out of the way, let's begin. Now, when a user is running this program, they're not going to want to see these two turtles, so let's give them a costume. Uh, now, adding a costume to these sprites is going to be the same as the process took in the Alonzo lab, but now with just two sprites. So, first you want to click on the first sprite down here in the sprite Coral. Then File, Costumes. And then when it opens up, if you want to going to want to click a costume, I'm just going to choose Abby A. So you click on it to select it. It's already selected in this case. It's just if you have multiple costumes already lined up here. And then you just cancel that. And now to add a sprite to the next costume, you simply click on the second one, the sprite crown. Sorry. And uh, repeat the process. So I'll click a different sprite. Let's do... Let's do Avery A. Oh, but what's this? It seems like it's upside down. Well, we could fix that easily. If you go to scripts and to motion, you can see this block point in direction 90. Drag that out here. And here you can adjust the angle of the sprite some trial and error sometimes. So we have to rotate in 90 degrees, and there you go. Now for the next part of this lab, you have to get creative. So you're going to have to open one of these custom blocks, let's start with who to, and edit the items in this list to your own responses. So you can do this by just clicking on one of them and changing it. So let's change Malik to, I don't know, Liam. So after you do this, you're going to hit apply to save this. And uh, you could also add more or less objects to the list by clicking these black arrows. 
which adds more or less items depending on the direction you click. So you're going to want to remember to hit apply or OK. And we'll be back when we've changed who to Sprite, who and does what. You don't have to change all of them, but it's good to have your own creative responses. So after you finish that, you want to make sure everything is in working order because even if we have small changes, it never hurts to double check. This process of testing, finding problems, and fixing code is called debugging, and you will need to do this a lot when going down these tutorials. To test this program, simply run it by clicking on this sequence here multiple times and seeing if all the responses are in order. This is C Help Cleveland. Oh, but nobody listened to my cat. Seems fair. Miss C in a band with Miss C. Well, we didn't fix that yet. We will eventually. Oh, but nobody helped me. Miss C ran away from Mina. Oh, but nobody helped my cat. See, everything is in perfectly working order. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do today is to change the background of the program. To do this, you're going to want to click on the stage in the sprite corral, go to file, and then click backgrounds, just like you would when you're selecting costumes. So here you have a wide range of backgrounds that you can select from. Let's select the uh, pathway. You click import, and you're done. If you have multiple ones here, you can just select each one by clicking on them, and that will switch the background. And uh, that will conclude lesson three of our Snap Tutorial series. Next episode will be an in-depth look at custom blocks and how to create them.